Good morning. It's Angie again from Little Dumplings Nursery. It's Tuesday morning. Um, this is October the 17th and I'm sitting here live in my nursery and I just wanted to chat with you guys a little bit today while I had a few uh, uh, minutes to myself time off that we could just talk a little bit. I hope that those of you out there in Facebook land and in YouTube are enjoying the videos I've been making. Um, if you are on my Little Dumplings Nursery Facebook page, you can see these videos live as they air. And then once the video has aired, it is left up on my page that you can go back and see it later for viewing. If you are watching me by uh, YouTube, I have downloaded the video and by the time it makes it to YouTube, it's not live, but you can still write me and ask any questions you may have. Um, and I'll be so happy to help anybody that has any questions. If you're interested in any of the dolls I show for sale, be sure to contact me. My um, email is L-I-L-D-U-M-P-L-I-N-S at gmail.com. So one of the first things I wanted to do this morning um, is show you guys once again uh, a baby that I have been offering you, and that is baby Suki. So let me pull her out. Um, I've shown Suki to you guys a couple of times, and I'm really quite surprised that she still has not found a home. Um, she is the ever-popular Suki Sculpt by Adri Stote, and she is the most cuddly little baby. Um, she's 19 inches long, and she's weighted, uh, I cannot remember, this one's right around four pounds. If you look on my website, it's listed. I do have her listed on eBay, um, but if you purchase her from me privately, right now I'm running her on a special for 300 with free U.S. shipping. That is a uh, phenomenal price on one of my um, darker skin tone babies because the darker babies take longer to paint. I don't usually offer them in this price range, but since Suki's been here a while, I am offering her at that price. And I refer to Suki as her, but a lot of people see this baby as a boy. So Suki's dressed in kind of a unisex colored outfit. Um, Suki could be whichever you prefer, girl or boy. As you see, Suki moves really well. Just such a cuddly baby. Suki uh, has three quarter arms and three quarter legs. And I wanted to do a little quick clothing change on Suki just to give you an idea of how Suki could look in something else because every time I've shown this baby to you, um, it's been wearing this outfit. So I'm going to quickly take off Suki's shirt and pants and put on a holiday outfit. Now Suki was painted with um, Baby FX air dry paints uh, and then she was sealed with Genesis heat set mediums, a combination of Genesis um, matte varnish and satin varnish. I um, have long been using this method with air dry paints just because I had not found any air dry sealers that were mad enough for my preferences. However, McPherson's has a new one out that's going to be on the shelves soon. They're um, working on getting them available to you guys and um, I've actually gotten to test that product. It is wonderful. I'm very excited because we finally have a a matte air dry product that is made specifically for vinyl. Uh, it has the, the binders and everything in it to make it stick well to the vinyl. So, um, and I've done multiple testing on it. It has not cracked or um, split or peeled on me at all. I have not had any problems with my limbs that I've, the test limbs I put it on, I've not had any problems going sticky. Um, so I'm really excited about this product. And you'll be seeing me using it now on um, most of my babies. The only time I would use Genesis now is if I had a customer who did a custom order who particularly requested it. One of my departures from Genesis to air dry paints has to do with breathing issues. Um, in the winter and fall months, I, I have a lot of issues more so than I do in the spring and summer with irritants and allergens. And I find that um, Genesis thinners, even though they're or not Genesis, but the odorless thinners you use with Genesis, even though they're supposed to be odorless, um, they still bother my, my throat, they make it burn, and they make me cough. And then in the winter, it's even worse because it's hard, it's difficult when you're working in a home studio to keep the room properly ventilated. Um, and even when you do, you're still being exposed to that. And of course, when you pull the warm vinyl pieces out of the oven, you're exposed to that as well. So that is that is an issue that I have. Um, more and more there are concerns arising about using Genesis because people 
are um, experiencing health issues um, and some people have even had issues with long-term um, diseases as a result of it so I just I just um, I don't argue I'm not going to debate whether or not that's happening with everybody all I can say is that I feel more comfortable not using the Genesis now and I love using my airdrop paints from the standpoint of um, they're just much easier to use. I don't have to run to the oven and that kind of thing. And with the McPherson's Re, uh, Reborn FX paints that I've been using, I'm finding them to be just fabulous paints. So um, that is um, my little plug for that. But as you can see, now we have here a little Christmas onesie that I have put on Suki. And this is a newborn size. Suki does have three quarter legs. And I custom designed Suki's body, so I make all my three-quarter limb bodies a little bit shorter in the legs so that it's easier to uh, pull the little onesies down over them so that even though it's not a full limb baby, I'll get her all in one hand, you can, you can still display them in a onesie. So that's Suki with a onesie on, and I actually have a little pair of red pants here. I'm going to put a pair over it. So Suki will be all ready for Christmas. I cannot believe we're getting close to the Christmas months, but the decorations are already in the stores, and uh, somebody this morning, I don't know why, I posted on Facebook that they, the statement, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, and I don't know if it's snowing where they live, or cold, or what, but I was like, oh boy, Christmas is coming. So, here is our little Suki dress all in red for Christmas. Now, isn't that just absolutely adorable? Ah, oh, I love it. The onesie says, who needs mistletoe when you're this cute? So if you purchase Suki, I will send this outfit along with the other one. How about that? So there's our little baby. Uh, Suki would make the perfect gift for somebody for Christmas. Would be great for an adult collector, an older junior collector. I think Suki would be a good comfort baby, comfort therapy baby. Because um, Suki is weighted, but not tremendously heavy. So, um that's our little Suki. If you're interested in purchasing Suki, don't hesitate to contact me. Hopefully Suki will be finding a home soon. So I'm going to lie Suki down here. Um, I've been, I've had some questions about painting with air dry paints. One of the questions that I have gotten is, um, how do you paint your creases? Some people have a lot of difficulty with their creases with air dry paints. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about mixing paints with the Reborn FX paints. Now for those of you who are still new to this or just maybe um, have not heard about the Reborn FX paints yet, Reborn FX is a very high quality pigment paint that McPherson's in Canada is producing now. They have the sole patent on these paints. You cannot purchase them anywhere but from them. They have two versions of the paints. These are the pre-mixed colors. And then they also have pure pigments. So here's like an example of the little bottle of pure pigment. Now you can buy the pure pigment and then buy the emulsion and mix, mix them to your own preferences and your own ratios and use them that way. That's not how I prefer to do it. I like the premixed colors, which already has your emulsion and everything mixed into it. You can use these straight out of the bottle the way they are, but I will tell you they're very intense in coloring and pigment. So, um, I do use them straight out of the bottle for things like lip color um, or in my creasings, I thin, them, I thin them less, things like that. But for when you're laying skin tones, like, um, like especially if you're used to painting with Genesis paints where you're used to doing thinner skin tones and doing multiple skin tones, then you can thin these down further using the, um, in the products that they have, which is the dilutant and the matting fluid. Uh, they also, you can use the emulsion and you can use a little bit of water. So, and I've played around with different ratios of thinning. If you use water, I recommend that you add just a drop of emulsion to offset the water, because water, if you're thinning with a lot of water, because um, water does uh, break down the binders, <coughs> excuse me, and the pigments. But if you're just thinning it a little bit, say like for creases, or you just, or um, just to extend the paint, then usually I find that I work really well with just using some dilutant and some matting fluid. Um, I don't use the open time a whole lot in my skin tones because I don't need a lot of dry time for my skin tones, but I do use it for my crease colors and the lip colors, and that's what I'm about to show you. So, um, and when I say open time, this 
is a bottle of open time. And what their open time is, is it's kind of like a retarder or a slow dry, excuse me a minute. Every time I get to talking, my allergies kick in and I start, my throat gets irritated. But anyway, um, the open time gives you more dry time, more working time on, on with your paints. Um, it is also different from retarder. It's not just like a retarder or slow dry in that it does have a little bit of the extra binder added to it as well. So it will thin and increase your drying time without reducing the adhesion property of your paint. It does not thin, uh, or I'm sorry, it does not increase your drying time as much as straight retarder does. But I find that it's enough to, to make things workable. And if you're a, a new person to air dry paints and you need more work time, it definitely will help you. So what I do when I'm doing, and I just grabbed a bottle, random model here. When I'm doing a crease color, I'll do a drop of the pre-mix color, a drop of open time, and usually about one drop of water. I mix that, and when I say water, it's, that is distilled water. You want distilled water because it has no metals or anything in it to um, mess up your paints. So I mix it like that, and then I paint my crease with a little liner brush, something like, um, I don't think of brushes here, but you want a small liner brush. I um, don't know if I have a really small one in here or not, but anyway, this one's kind of lost its point. But anyway, if you use a small liner brush and paint your crease, and then I keep another brush, a, a, a bigger brush on hand, that after, and I'm just gonna do this, I don't have any paint here, but I'm just gonna show you. After I paint my crease, then I will take a dry brush and just kind of go back over it and wipe it a little bit or pounce it a little bit to kind of blend that color. And then if I blend too much off, I can always go back and add a little more crease color. But I want um, to get across that when you're painting creases, you don't want colored lines. Creases should be shadowing. So it should look like a shadow, just like when you when you look at my arm, you can see that it's like shadowed here where my crease is. It just looks darker. So the, you want to do the, create the same illusion on your kit. You don't want big lines of paint. You don't want crusty looking paint. And a lot of people just try to thin their paint with water and just do it that way. And they wind up with the crusty lines that way because the paint doesn't smooth the the paint's not going on smoothly for two reasons. You've only used water, which is already causing the, the binders and the paint to break down so they get that speckledy look to them. And then it just doesn't flow well. So that's how I paint my creases. And while I'm holding this leg, I'll go ahead and show you. This is one that I've been working on. This is um, a Coco Milo. And you can see I've been laying some skin tones. So I've already got um, right here you can see some light blue veining. Here you can see some yellow undertones. You can see the speckled mottling. Um, you can see a little blue undertone there. So these are all very subtle skin tone colors that I've been laying on this. And I've gotten it to the point now that the next thing I'm going to do is start painting crease color. After I paint my crease color, I will go by and do some blushing. And then I will evaluate the whole piece as to whether or not I want to add anything to the overall skin tone because even though this looks very subtle right now when you do creases and you add blushing everything's really going to pop so it's going to really look great so this is going to be one of the babies that's going to be on my christmas special babies um, that i'm doing um, if you're not familiar with coco milo she didn't have any eyes in but this is coco i have two of these i'm working on turn her sideways so you can see some of the coloring like I said, it just, it without the crease coloring, it just doesn't pop just yet, but she's going to, or he, whichever. So I've got two of these that I'm working on that are gonna be available for 300 shipped for Christmas. And then I've got a couple of other kits that I'm gonna be working on. Um, the other thing I wanted to, um, hey Michelle, good morning. I think you and I are the only ones up. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is, um, I've had several people to, to write me about different brands of air dry paints over the years. Um, and to give you a little bit of history about myself, I started making Reborn Dolls in 2004. When I started making Reborn Dolls, um, the art was still fairly new. We were using uh, oil-based paints, oil paints. Some people were actually using oil pastels, which I played with those. Some people were even using uh, oil-based makeups like um, uh, lip 
liner pencils and um, things like that. So people that were just wanting to give it a try before they invested any money in it. So that's where we started. And then um, from there, the cream stencils became real popular. We painted with those for a while, um, different things. Um, during those days, somebody played around with the acrylics, like the craft acrylics, the folk art and that kind of thing. The insides of the pieces were painted with the blue wash or the purple wash to, to, to make the, or the orangey looking vinyl we have back then look less orange. And then later that was bleeding through and causing bruised looking babies. And somewhere along the way, somebody got into the heat set paints and we used all jumped on the Genesis um, bandwagon. And that's where Genesis became really popular to paint to paint vinyl with. And Genesis is still a very popular painting medium. During that time, I, I played back and forth with different um, air dry paints, starting with Just Sun Just being one of the first paints that I played around with. And I really like Just Sun Just paints. Um, at the time, I really, really enjoyed painting with them, but I found that I had some fading issues with some kits, not all. And over the years, finally figured out that that was due to thinning them with nothing but water. And since then, along my journey, if you've followed my blogs, you know that I have um, discovered that you've got to add mediums back to your paints, use very little to no water, and that kind of thing. So during that time, there were other companies that saw that people had a big interest in air dry paints. And so people started. Uh, developing paints for painting on dolls. There was bloomers and bows. Um, and I cannot remember the lady that used to run that business, but um, she got really sick and she's no longer with us. But um, she had her own line of air dry paint and some people used hers. I, I personally never tried her paint. Then the Little Dreams collection came out for the LDC paints, and I did use those for some time. Um, they had very limited colors. I think they still make those paints. And those particular paints could not be heat set without turning orange. Um, and sometimes I also noticed that if you had to strip a kit, that it could stain the vinyl orange after you had, had painted and then stripped. So I'm not sure what was in those or is in those, but they were not my favorite method of painting. Uh, Honey Buns came out with her paints, and um, I played with those some. Um, and I always would find different things about different systems that I liked and different things that I didn't like, and I kept flip-flopping back and forth to the to the, to the the Genesis, back and forth between that and some of the air-dry paints. One of the big things was a lot of the air-dry paints would dry up in the pots and didn't have a very long shelf life, so... Um, I had issues with that, that I would invest a lot of money in paints and then have them dry out on me. And then the other issue is that you, is sometimes they would fade if they were not applied properly or the pigments just were not as strong or whatever. And then the Baby FX came out and as you all know and have followed me, I really love Baby FX um, and they worked very well. And of course she um, no longer produces those paints. And so then Reborn FX just happened to be hitting the market about the time that Baby FX left the market. Uh, I have to honestly say that I am, I did not think in the beginning I was going to like my Reborn FX as much as my Baby FX because of getting used to the fact that Baby FX was more of a flat finish and not, didn't have the sheen. It, it was more uh, matte. But I've gotten onto my Reborn FX so much now that even when I paint with Baby FX, I'm mixing Reborn FX products in with them and I'm really loving my, my, my Reborn FX paints. And I was going to show you guys, um, and there's a point to why I'm saying all this. I'll tell you in just a minute. But I was, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to pull my chair back. And um, over my paintbrushes. And if you look right here on this shelf, this entire shelf right here, this is entirely Baby FX products. And this entire shelf right here is entirely Reborn FX products. So I have a lot of air dry paints and a lot of air dry products. And I also have things like, um, and of course I have the pan pastels and that kind of thing. And I even have some golden paints here that I've purchased that honestly I have not. I got these right before Reborn FX paints came out and I started playing with Reborn FX. And so I never really actually got around to, to playing with these, but I know that you can mix these with the Reborn FX emulsion and combine the two. It's just, I've got so many colors I haven't needed to. Um, so I've got a good stockpile of paints here. I've played with a lot of paints. And I said all that to say this. I feel like I'm pretty well 
qualified to tell you if a paint system is a good paint system. So if I've used it, I can certainly tell you if it is. If I haven't used it, all I can tell you is what I think based on, on the results I've seen others get or pictures that I've seen or whatever. So I do get uh, quite a few emails asking me, what do I think of this paint system? What do I think of that one? There's a few out there that I have not tried. Um, there's Luminaire, I think it's called, Lumiere. I have not tried those. I don't know anything about them other than that they're air dry paints. There are people who really like them. Uh, of course, there's Miracle Blend, which I had never purchased Miracle Blend. I did have someone send me a sample set of Miracle Blend and asked me to test them for them and give them my honest opinion. And I liked the Miracle Blend paints. Um, I don't, I did not, I would not use them the way that maybe it's recommended with thinning with so much water. Uh, it goes against what I know to be true about air dry paint. So when I used Miracle Blend and did my testing, I did add my binders in and some products here that I had that I knew would make them work well. And I had had some people tell me they had problems with Miracle Blend fading and others telling me they had not had any problem at all with them fading. And I think it goes back to how you mix the paint. So that's a brand that some people really like. There's another brand that has recently come out called Share Air Paints. I have never used her paints. I don't know anything about them from firsthand experience. If someone wants me to test those paints, I will be more than happy to do so. If you have the samples to send me, I'm not going to invest money in any more paints because as you see I have plenty but if you have some samples and you want me to test those paints and tell you what I think about it I will absolutely do so and I will um, give you my honest opinion right now all I can say is I have seen pictures of dolls painted with those paints and um, from what I have seen looking at the website looking at the paints and the, and the babies that I've seen others paint it appears to be a very soft um uh soft pigmented paint so and i've had one person who's compared them to others who's used them to tell me that that she found them to be a very soft pigmented paint so if you are a soft painter and you don't like um you don't use a lot of of, dim of um dimension of color a lot of color with your babies i don't mean a lot of varied colors but i mean a lot of color intensity and I don't mean overly intense either, but I mean, if you're just a very soft peaches and cream kind of painter, then, or you're a beginner and you're afraid of getting too much paint on at, at, at the, the time you, when you're learning to use it, then I think that, that you would, from what I'm saying, you would probably like them. I just cannot tell you about their longevity or how strong their pigments are or how good their shelf life is or any of that because I've, I've just not purchased them. And like I said before, I personally believe that Reborn FX is the best paint on the market right now. Um, they do have very strong pigments. They do have a very good shelf life. The only thing you will find with them is sometimes you get some separation in the bottle, which I can probably show you this purple. The colors that are very dense, um, you can get some separation in the bottle as the pigment sinks to the bottom because they have so much pure pigment. And you just have to shake them up. And I've even bought little glass balls and little um, stainless steel balls to put in my paints. So then I can shake them up and get my get it mixed back up. And I'm not having a problem. And like I said, they're very true to color. They're very rich. And you can thin them down to get a lighter application if that's what you want. So that is... Um, just a little thing I wanted to say there, just because I've been getting a lot of emails asking me about what I think of other brands of paint. Um, let's see, I've got Deborah McCandless. Hello, Deborah. Hope you enjoyed your trip. Saw you guys went to uh, Dolly Wood, I believe it was, and I've um, been out of town. I would love to take a trip, but that's not happening anytime soon. <laughs> um, Let's see, that's pretty much everything I was going to cover this morning. I just wanted to quickly go over those things. Um, and um, I don't have anything else to bring to you right now. Um, if you guys, um, like I said, have any questions, please don't hesitate to write me. Um, if you, if there's anything I can help you with, I, I will do my best. Don't forget that I do have a blog, uh, Little Dumplings Nursery Blog Spot. It's on Google, and I do put a lot of information up there, pictures, um, trial and error, experiments that I show, um, things like that. So um, 
if you read through there, there's a lot of information and you can even see where over the years I've tried one thing and then I might have liked it at the time. And then the next year later, you know, something else came along that was better and I will say it, you know, it's better. So you can kind of follow my history there as well. But um, that's pretty much it for this morning. I've got to head into work here in a few minutes and I just wanted to say hey and give you guys a shout out this morning and hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you later.